So I don't know if I've ever said anything more controversial on this channel than olive oil is evil. And I don't mean that olive oil is really evil. I'm just trying to make a dramatic point in which using olive oil to cook with in cast iron and carbon steel and stainless steel can create a lot of problems. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jed, this is Cook Culture. So today we're gonna to step into the kitchen with our friend Chef Mara. And Chef Mara is gonna help us understand why is olive oil problematic to use when you're cooking with cast iron and carbon steel and stainless steel? And when should we use it? And also the most exciting part is how do we choose a great olive oil? If we go to the store and we've got a you know, lineup of olive oils in front of us with all various prices, how do we choose a great olive oil? And when do we use it? So excited to share this with you. This is Chef Mara in our kitchen. Okay, olive oil 101. So I'm here with my friend Chef Mara. Hi Mara. Hi Jed. So Mara is going to teach me about olive oil. So I talk about olive oil all the time in this channel, how I don't want people to use it in cast iron because it can cause gumminess and carbon buildup, but it does have a place and Mara is going to help me understand what place that is. So Mara has a good understanding of olive oil. She's learned specifically about how it's used and made in Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she is going to give me kind of the, the, the ABCs or the Coles notes of what I need to know so I can be more educated and use it more effectively in my own cooking. So thank you. Yeah, well, I think it's one of the more expensive things in our pantry. Mm -hmm. And people do love olive oil and it's healthy, but there's a lot of bad olive oil out there and people have a hard time knowing how to choose. Okay. So I did learn tasting in mm -hmm. Italy um, and we learned to identify the faults of olive oil, which is really hard when you're tasting it blind. So we're not gonna go too deep, but just in a general way, so people have some guidelines when they go to the store and see all these different olive oils at so many different price points, mm -hmm how to kind of sort out what's what. Okay, can we first talk about the, the elephant in the room? Mm -hmm. And that to me is where I talk about not using olive oil all the time. Mm -hmm. Like <clears throat> practically what I found with customers mm -hmm. is that when I have a customer that comes with me with a problem with their with their pan, yeah. the first thing that I've learned to ask, are you using olive oil? Yeah. And I would say 99% of the time, yeah. they are like, yes, I use olive oil. Yeah. So the first thing I ask them to do is get rid of olive oil and replace it with grapeseed oil. Yeah. And I'd say 70% of the problems are gone yeah. just from that. So can yeah. you help me understand why that is? Well, yeah, because olive oil has a lower smoke temperature. It's not a really good cooking oil. Okay. You can use some olive oil to cook if you keep the temperature low. Or what I like to do is mix it with another oil like grapeseed oil. Okay. I don't like to use canola oil myself because of the genetically modified elements yep. of it. Yep. But um, grapeseed oil is very neutral and very clean. And I'm going to talk about finishing oils versus kind of an everyday oil. Yep. And if you kind of understand and buy that way, um, based on what you like, I, I right. think... So you're talking about two different types of oil to have in your pantry? Well, actually three, because you have the grapeseed, grape a different finishing oils. oil, and, a, and kind of an everyday oil that you can cook with, but don't heat it too much. Yeah, and so that's one of the main things. Or mix it with grapeseed. Yeah, because yeah, what I've found when I've been reproducing the problem with cast iron is that if you're using an olive oil, mm -hmm. and, and like a medium quality olive oil yeah. that you buy from the grocery store, I find when it starts to thin out and it gets onto the pan and yeah. there's not quite a lot of volume of it yeah. is when it starts to smoke and then stick and become gummy and blacken and that's where the yeah, problem is. Yeah, because of that low smoke temperature. Right. So it, it and even in all or in Italy, what they'll often use is um, sunflower oil. Okay. Every okay. kitchen as well as olive oil, they'll have sunflower oil. So if they're making arancini, any kind of fried thing, yeah. um, uh, piccata milanese, like a schnitzel, yeah. they'll fry it in uh, sunflower oil. Okay. Um, and what about cheap uh, olive oil? Like what I've found in, when, in my experimenting, yeah. you know, when I'm using really thin, yeah. plain colored olive oil, it works just as well as grapeseed oil. I would just get cheap olive oil out of there. Better okay. to use grapeseed oil yeah. than really cheap olive oil. Yeah. You can add beautiful olive oil flavor after you've cooked it by dressing it, by yeah. just like, you know, kissing it with a little bit of really good expensive olive oil that's worth it and, okay. and that's just a better because I think some of the oils that you can buy like pomace oil mm -hmm. palm and when they say cold pressed all olive oil should be cold pressed okay. so only by extra virgin mm -hmm. and if it's if it's not cold pressed after they take olive oil and press it mm -hmm. they can take all the pomace mm -hmm. which are the pits mostly the pits 
and just like you, you have this puck and they either by chemical extraction mm -hmm. or by heat extraction get even more oil out of it right you don't want that okay. it's not good for your health you're better to have grapeseed oil right. okay okay excellent thank you um so i'm excited about a tasting so i you know i have tasted a lot of olive oil but i've actually never done a tasting like this so thank mm. you very much this is really exciting for me so when I learned to taste olive oil in Italy, we would do it in the little takeout espresso cups. Mm -hmm. And they're white, and the reason you want white is because when professional tasters are tasting olive oil, they could have judgments based on the color of the olive oil. Mm. So if you have a white one, then you're not gonna really look at the color. So do you think when we see something like, like that's deep and green mm -hmm. and fruity, we're like, oh, that's gonna be yummy? Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. The, the visual judgment. Yeah. And then also, um, just on that, kind of on that subject, Olive oil is also stored in dark bottles mm -hmm. because sun affects it and it affects the nutrients and the quality and it can make it go rancid quicker. Mm -hmm. So keep it in your cupboard and, and you'll know that it's, and don't ever buy olive oil that's not in a dark container. Yeah, okay, awesome. Okay. So where are we starting? We're gonna start with, as I, as I mentioned, I have two grades of olive oil in my house. Mm -hmm. So I usually have two oils and I brought a representation of each kind. This is kind of an everyday oil. You mm -hmm. can make, you know, if you just want to make a vinaigrette that has mustard and all kinds of stuff in it, or yeah. um, if you do want to use a little bit of it in cooking, either on its own or to mix with canola oil, mm -hmm. you want a cheaper everyday oil. Still extra virgin, yeah. and I still like to know the origin of where it's from. Mm -hmm. So I used to use this one quite a bit, uh, Italissima. That was kind of my everyday oil. But yep. since then, I've been buying this one, and that's the one I prefer. Yep. And then here's another one, because we sometimes see them in cans. Yep. So I have a favorite. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna tell you which is, okay. well, I mean, I kind of already have, but <laughs> I want you to just taste. There's one sample of each, and okay. we're tasting them out of little mini ramekins. Yep. Now, the way you taste olive oil is, you take it, and you, this is going to be a little bit strange. Okay, so this is so the I'm going to explain it first. Yeah, yep. we're going to start. This is number one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So we're going to take number one, and what you're going to do is just take a little sip, and then you're going to um, aerate it and push it back to your mouth. You're going to go kind of like, okay, like, like, like pull that. It, pull it through. Yeah, but like, you, what do you they actually call that when you there's a thing that you do with teeth that you do a is it salt water or something that you pull your teeth pulling pulling teeth. You remember that? No. Anyways, yeah, anyways, so the thing that you do, I've so, done that before. But you're sucking air in, and it's going to allow the oil to go to the back. So you kind of get it in all parts of your mouth, in the front, and the side, and okay. at the back. Okay. And then, you don't have to take it all, but take a little sip. Hmm. Am I doing that right? Mm-hmm. So what do you think about that one? Yeah, I don't like it. It tastes metally and yucky. I'm not a fan either. I feel it has kind of a greasy characteristic too. If you have good olive oil, it shouldn't feel yeah. like grease in your mouth. Yeah. You like, know, like want... there's a difference between oil in your mouth and grease in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. No, it just leaves and it's got a really nasty aftertaste in the back of my mouth. It's like... So I would say any, like there's probably 90% of the olive oils that you get in a grocery store that seem to be reasonably priced are not going to taste much better than that. So it's good to go through your cupboards and just take a okay. look. And if, if, if it's not palatable like that, you shouldn't be using it. Yeah. No, it's just, it's dead. Yeah. So let's okay. try the next one. Okay. I'm, am I doing that right? Yeah. Sure. I feel funny doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, Actually, a lot more, lot more body to this. A lot. It doesn't have anywhere near that really shitty taste. Like that was that. Was, yeah. That's really disgusting. This is totally fine. Yeah. It's neutral. There's not a lot of flavor to it. It's a bit. It's, it's kind of. New. I find it a little bit buttery. Like it's as opposed buttery, to greasy, for sure, it's, it's kind buttery. of buttery. Yeah. It's got a lot of fatness to it. Like yeah. It got all of my lips right away, and there's a lot of fat yeah. to it, which is totally fine. You kind of want that in olive oil. Yeah. Um, not a lot of flavor. Yeah and a little bit of an acidic taste in the back of my mouth. Yeah. So it's like, it's just kind of like a, it's, it's just flavorless kind of fat. Yeah. It's like almost like melted butter without the butter taste. Yeah. You already said that, I think. Yeah, that's what it tastes like. So okay. there's an important thing I forgot to show you. <laughs> Had a bit of a cold this week, so I'm not smelling as much as I should. So uh. we have to start by smelling it. So let me show you something about Doesn't smelling smell it. Much. 
Okay. Doesn't matter because we didn't need to do a deep dive into those first two anyway. Yeah. Take your hand and put it over top. Yeah. And then take the bottom of your hand and just warm it up. And this time we're going to smell it before we taste it. A bit sticky. You're just heating it slightly. And then you're just kind of keeping the odors inside. And then you're going to smell it. Hmm. How much there? Yeah, it's pretty light on the nose. Like it, but it's not <coughs> unpleasant. We yeah, don't it smells smell, like olive oil. We don't no. smell anything moldy, totally. vinegary, rancid. No. Um, and those are some of the faults. Or um, okay. uh, scalded. Those yeah. are some of the faults that you can get okay. with olive oil. We're not smelling no, that. No, it smells like olive oil, just not very much. Not very exciting. Yeah, not very exciting. It's definitely. Okay. Definitely. Mmm. Yeah. A little bit better, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit more character. Yeah. Yeah, there's like, there's like flavors in it. Mm-hmm. What Instead kind of, of flavors are you getting? Like a, you know when you eat like a walnut? And okay. And you finished eating the walnut? And it's like the flavor that's yes. left over? Yes. It tastes like that. Yeah. Yeah. So nutty flavors are often very common. This one's Italian, but I don't think it has... Oh, no, no. This one's from Sicily. So this one's from the Belice Valley. Mm, it's, it's really near nice, Near Castel Vetrano. Yeah. Nutty flavors are often quite common in the northern olive oils. Yeah. Um, and we're going to get into a couple more southern olive oils soon. Yeah. Which has... So they start producing olive oil in central Italy. Mm -hmm. So Tuscany, Liguria, Umbria, and then they go south. And the flavor profile changes quite a bit. Right, as it gets drier and drier. And, and hotter and hotter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the south they get spicier. Mm -hmm. um, often grassy, nutty flavors are what you're gonna get in central Italy. Mm -hmm. And then as you get further south you get more aggressive, kind of like tomato leaf, artichoke. Mm. You can still mm. get grassiness, but you often get like a spicy finish at the back. Mm. Um, and if you need a little palate cleanser, you can just grab a piece yeah. of bread. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. The, I, the first one, definitely, I needed to like brush my teeth. Yeah. But uh, that one, like, it's a nice flavor left in my mouth. It, it tastes, it tastes really good. So now we're going to get into some oil. Okay, so these are kind of the things that you would say would be our cooking oils. If you're going to cook, these are the ones where you would, you would cook yeah. with. Yeah, which is your favorite? Oh, definitely, by yeah. far. Yeah, yeah, like like no comparison. Me too. Yeah. I love this one, and it's my everyday oil at home now. Yeah, it's excellent. And price comparatively, like, is it priced fairly reasonably? I think this one's about 18 for a liter. It's not yeah. bad. Yeah, and this would be like 12 for a liter, right? Uh, yeah, I yeah. believe around that. Yeah, maybe yeah. you'll get a 9 14, maybe. Okay. Yeah, because okay. it's so not all price. Like, that's the thing. You have to do a tasting once in a while. And, and yeah. actually, if you buy that's olive oil. That's too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And if you buy olive oil from somebody that you trust, you yep. can talk to them about it. Yep. And try something new and take it home. Go to a tasting if, if a shop offers it. Mm -hmm. And um, try a few different things and yeah. see what you think yourself. Yeah. And you awesome. can pick your own favorite. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll put the name of this olive oil in the description below so you can find it if you can locally. Yep. Great. Okay. Okay, so, so that's the kind of the, the basic everyday sort of olive oils that you would say. Now mm -hmm. I'm moving into... The highbrow stuff. Okay, so yeah, exactly. So these are priced higher. First, we're gonna start with a Spanish olive oil. Spain is really kind of storming the marketplace now. Um, there's So now we're gonna look a little bit more at the label. You should always look at the label. Like I said, you don't want pomace oil. You want extra virgin always, mm -hmm. and that's what all three of those are. This was Greek, by the way, Italian with no origin, so we don't really know where it is from. Right. It could even be, there's a lot of fraud in the olive oil business too, so right. this one could even be olives purchased in North Africa right. and Tunisia and that sort of thing, right? In, yeah, yeah. In, um, right. And this one, I just happen to know, I mean, it, they wouldn't name it after a valley if it wasn't right. produced there, so I know that one's from, there's a lot of olives there. Yep. Well, you know when you get Castel Vetrano olives, the mm -hmm. eating ones? Mm -hmm. That's right there in the Belice Valley. Okay, and where about is the Belice Valley in Sicily on the west coast? It's or on the east in coast? northwest Sicily. Right, so towards uh, um, Palermo. Uh, yeah, kind of like southwest of Palermo. Okay, yeah. in Corleone region. It's not that far from Corleone. There you go. Actually, it's where they they arrested that criminal that was on the lamb for thirty years. Okay, right around there. Yeah, yeah, it's a but pretty arid good place. olive oil. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so now I actually have never been to Spain. I've spent a lot of time in Italy, but not in Spain. Okay. So I'm not an expert on Spanish olive oil, but I know that there's more and more Spanish olive oil avail available on the marketplace. Okay. So an interesting, th it's extra virgin olive oil. Yep. Um, an interesting thing about this one, the same company produces a couple different kinds, and this one is Pical, I guess. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And that's the variety. Mm -hmm. I don't know a great deal about olive oil varieties because mm -hmm. there's so many varieties. Okay. You'd have to really do a deep dive. I yep. know a little bit in, of the Sicilian varieties because mm -hmm. I've spent time there, but I thought it was an interesting marketing thing that they're yep. trying, you know, we're all pretty savvy about wine and varieties in wine that yep. they're marketing it by right. putting the variety on Makes there. Makes a ton of sense. Like, when you go to the olive bar at like a Whole Foods or whatever, there's like 50 olives in front of you. Yeah. Right? There's yeah. A lot of olives out there. Exactly. Yeah. And then on the back, um, it says 100% Pical olives. It has, this is an interesting thing. It has a best before date. So mm -hmm. the best before date is June 2023. Okay. So we're in 2023 right now. That's interesting because in Italy, at least, you cannot sell a bottle of olive oil that's more than a year old. Okay. In North America, yeah. you can sell it up to two years old. So they can, when they have stock that they have to get rid of yeah. after a year, they ship it over to us. And it's still decent, but yep. it's not going to be as bright and alive. Right. The other thing is, because these are kind of so pure and, you know, well-made, really all those qualities, they're really at their best mm -hmm. in the first year. Mm -hmm. So, okay. and their nutrition as well. Yep. Okay, so we're going to try the Spanish one together. Oh, we didn't smell it. I'm mm. so sorry. Is that right? <laughs> one, one quick slurp to just bring it to the sides of your mouth. Oh. You know, it, I don't. I actually like this one better. Really? Yeah. I find this yeah. one really neutral. There's not a lot of flavor to it. Yeah. It's like. It's kind of like it's better than the talisma, talisma mm -hmm. but it's not like I like the, the nuttiness of yeah. that one over this one. Yeah, I bought one bottle of the, I, I mean, I'd have to really, to be fair, I'd have to go to Spain and kind of explore right. what's going on with olive oil there. Yeah. But I notice a lot of chefs now are using Spanish yeah. olive oil. But it's more, this is more of a premium than this one in price, yeah? Yeah, it's a little bit more. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, like the, the texture, like it's definitely neutral. Yeah. Like it doesn't leave a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. The smell is very nothing. It really doesn't have much of a smell. A little bit of grassiness, but not too much. Yeah. 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 No, I, I definitely, like, right now, I'm, I'm loving that one. Yeah. Now, let's switch these. Switch. Okay. We're going to switch them. Now okay. We switched our samples. Because the next one that I want you to try is from Planeta. And I think a lot of people know Planeta through wine production. Okay. Planeta also... To Sicilian. Sicilian. Planeta actually has vineyards all around Sicily. Yeah. But their primary operation is in the Belice Valley. Okay. Which is the same valley right. that this one comes from. Okay. So this is substantially more. Yeah. Now we're getting into the, you know, $24, $28 range. Okay. This isn't Canadian dollars, so this yeah. would be like $18, $15 US. Yeah. yeah. Right? And these are finishing oils. Like, you want to drizzle this onto some really nice bruschetta or something. Yeah, grassy, definitely grassy. Mm -hmm. Are you getting any artichoke -y or artichoke or no, tomato? I'm getting leaf? like, you're not fresh cut grass, but like when grass has been cut like the day, the day before, it's like mm -hmm. that. It's mm -hmm. like when it's sweet. It's, when it's kind of sun baked, when you cut um, the grass. It smells and then like it, wheatgrass. Yes, yeah. yeah, it really does. Yeah, yeah. I love this oil. Super wheatgrass, like, like pow. Mm-hmm. Like very green. Very, very green. Very alive. Wow. Tons of. And it's, right. and it's spicy. <laughs> I'm ready for that. Yeah, we'll have to have a drink of water. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't. I was not ready for that hit. That was hot on the back of the, the throat. The Sicilians are hot. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was fantastic. Like yeah. hot in a good so way. Like imagine, it's not sitting. It's not like burning in my throat now. It's just it came on and then went off. And but the flavor first that, that was fantastic. Really wheat grassy and so imagine a nice grilled fish. You know, maybe marinate it in a little garlic mm. and or you know sear it in a pan. Yeah. And then afterwards. 
sear it in a pan with the with the um, grape seed oil. Yeah. yeah. And then afterwards, do a nice little like fresh tomato chop and herbs, mm -hmm. and just spoon that over with fresh olive oil on top of it. Yeah, with that's that just oil. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that kind of oil is really good for. Yeah. Or of course, a caprese salad. Everybody right. eats caprese salads. I won't eat them in a restaurant unless I have confidence that that restaurant's going to put good olive right. oil right. on the cheese and the tomatoes. Right. So, do, you, do you ever take your own, own olive oil to, to a restaurant with you? No, I haven't done that. <laughs> I'm too shy to I do can, that. I can see taking that. I mean, just ask for it and eat and take your own olive oil. That's a great idea. Yeah, I can do that. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and that, you know, that was if fantastic. You're, I take trips to Sicily and we go to Planeta, we go to the winery. Oh, okay. And a lot of people like to bring home, it's a nice little gift idea for people. They have little mini bottles okay. of the olive oil. Yeah. So you could stash yeah, yeah, yeah. that in your pocket or your totally. purse and that's totally. the one that's you the bring one you out. Just, it's yeah, like, yeah. Uh, no, I'll use my own oil, thanks. Yeah, yeah. or just and, like, oh, no oil, thanks. It's, it's eating no oil is quite common, right? People yeah. have no oil diets, right? So Yeah, yeah, yeah well, yeah. it's funny this whole kind of cheap balsamic vinegar and cheap olive oil dunk yeah. your bread yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the sweetness of the balsamic, right? The little bit of fat and the sugar of the yeah, balsamic. Yeah, that's what it's but it's about. really not done in Italy. It's really a North right. American yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. That, that was fantastic. Super excited about that one. Okay, so this one, this is also from Sicily, and it's a DOP from Mount Ibli. What does so, DOP mean? DOP means denominazione, denomination, d'origine, of the origin, Protegetta, protected. Okay. So when, you know, in an Italian label of like Parmesan cheese or prosciutto or like DOP products are certified by the European Union and Italy yep. to be what they're really saying they are. Okay. And it's awesome. all to prevent fraud. Yep. And so it's pretty cool to get an olive oil and you yep. kind of know exactly where it came so from. So would you recommend, if somebody's like, okay, I want to just have the best olive oil I can in the kitchen, I want mm -hmm. one, would you mm -hmm. say buy anything that DOP and you're going to do well? Yeah. Okay. Now, I think, I don't know if it costs money for a producer to participate in DOP, yep. but there could be some extra costs associated. Right. So if you went to Italy and you knew the guy who made yep. olive oil, sure. then you don't need it. But yeah. if you're but far if you, away yeah. and so you're trying you're to... So you're in the grocery store and you see one that's yeah. got that, that's the one to buy. Spend yeah. the extra money and buy that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm excited about trying this then. Okay. Okay, so let's definitely make sure we yeah. smell this one. Yeah, yeah. Because this one's going to be full of aromas. Okay. This one is from the Ragusa area. So it's a different area of Sicily. It's probably a different variety too. Okay. Ragusa is a little further south. Everybody's watching White Lotus now. So everybody wants, I watched White Lotus with great excitement yeah. thinking, here's a whole series about Sicily. Yeah. I didn't learn anything about food culture or history. <laughs> It's just, it's a great show. It's oh, really yeah. Uh, yeah, well, well done, but it's kind of just yeah. people and their problems traveling to Sicily. Well, I don't know anything about White Lotus, but I've, I've, I loved my time in Sicily. Yeah. Sicily is, I was very fortunate to be there in the spring. I was yes. there in February. So many wild herbs. Oh, and it was just green. It was like yeah. driving around in, in Ireland. Yeah. Right? It was yeah. just beautiful, beautiful time and yeah. cheap all over the place and... Yeah, just absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. So if you get a chance to go to Sicily, do. It's amazing, right? Went to Agrigento and looked yeah. at all the Greek ruins. And yeah. Yeah, it's spectacular, absolutely spectacular. And I take people to Sicily every year. Yeah, yeah. Small groups on yeah. culinary tours, and we go what and visit place. olive oil producers, cheese makers, yeah. and yeah. wineries, do a cooking class with the Duchess. Yeah. So Mara does uh, trips to Italy, uh, culinary trips, and there'll be a link in the description below if, if you guys are interested in that. All right. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it kind of leans towards the smell of, of that one. Like yes. That reminds me of the same thing. And that's terroir. That's the volcanic soil, the Sicilian terroir. Yeah. The ocean, the volcano, those are things that yeah. affect the way things taste. Okay, so it's still really grassy to me. Fattier. A lot mm -hmm. more body. Mm-hmm. And there's a little nuttiness in this one, too, more of an almondy. Yeah, it's much more mellow. There's yeah. that spice. Yeah, yeah the, spice is the, the spice no, comes near. later. It's not, yeah, it's not as, as that was That's sharp. That's true, the planeta was sharp. That was sharp. Yeah. This got some, definitely, it's really filling my mouth full of sparkles yeah. all over. Yeah. It's, it's got really nice, yeah. but not hot. It's just And I'm getting action. that artichoke thing too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that, that little bit of a, not bitter, 
but the artichoke, like the, yeah. what the heart tastes like, right? Like, like green like, vegetable. Yeah, but like that. But not cooked, like raw green yeah. vegetable. Yeah. Yeah, and the grassiness. Over, it's kind of overall yeah. arch of grassiness. Yeah, and kind um, of some of the but fresh, like the mustard grass. family of greens, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like even if you had like an arugula or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that's a little it's, lesson. The what fattiness. Do you think? I love. Okay. Like absolutely. Like, there's no doubt. Hands down. Mm -hmm. These two are by far, those. by far better. Yeah. The fattiness of this one. If I was going to do an olive oil, any sort of drizzling or dressing or the fattiness is is awesome yeah but that flavor right the yeah. flavor in this one that's i love that spiciness yeah. that kick in it so like i would have both and i would i would play around with both of those guys um and and use them in different ways but that's mm -hmm. like money well spent mm -hmm. right because you don't need much like that especially with this guy that definitely seems it's going to go further further mm -hmm. for you because of how fatty it really is right so that's fantastic, absolutely amazing. So that really helped expand my understanding of, you know, I, and I knew a lot of olive oils were going to taste differently, but, you know, really kind of the Sicilian olive oils, that was really interesting. Um, you know, when I was in Sicily, I definitely ate a lot of olive oil, but I didn't specifically eat mm -hmm. olive oil. Um, I mean, I think one of the biggest things we can learn from Italians, and they imprint their children with it at a very, very young age, Pay attention to how things taste. Mm. You know, when we're racing our kids around, it always they're always in the back of a car and going to a lesson, and yeah, we're yeah. in front of the TV. You have to really kind of engage with all your senses. Yeah, yeah. And when you do, it's like the the rewards are great. Totally. And uh, once you've yeah. tried good olive oil, there's kind of no going back. I hear you not. Yeah. Uh, so, um, can you show me a little bit of something that we could make, that we could drizzle? What, what could we make that we've got here that we could kind of... Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm going to get the grill pan out okay. and do a nice Roman bruschetta. It's the ultimate garlic bread. You can make it in your backyard on the barbecue. You can make it in the winter at home. So easy, okay. so fast. Yeah, so how do we make it? We're going to get the grill pan yeah. and heat it up really hot because okay. you want to practically char the bread. We're gonna cut the baguette through yeah. the middle, yeah. and we're gonna put it on there to grill. Yeah. Even get it a little singed, even a little black. Yeah. And uh, then when you take it off, you rub it with a clove of garlic, yeah. rub it with a leaf of basil, yeah. drizzle it with one of these great olive oils, a yeah. little bit of nice Malden sea salt maybe, yeah. and some black pepper, awesome. and that's it. Okay, let's do You'll it. You'll remember you had it tomorrow, I promise you. <laughs> let's do it. Okay. So I'm going to show you the easiest recipe for the ultimate garlic bread, a Roman bruschetta. This is great to have in your repertoire for barbecue season. You can do it outside on the grill, but you can also do it in your house, either under the broiler, or I love these uh, cast iron grill pans. That's m one of my favorite ways to do it. So I've got a really nice baguette from Folipi, organic, naturally leavened baguette from our beautiful local bakery here in Victoria, BC. Okay, I'm just gonna cut the baguette this way. You know, sometimes a baguette can really be crispy, so really be careful when you're cutting it and always use a good sharp knife. It's actually less dangerous to use a sharp knife than it is to use a dull one because you're not putting the same amount of pressure. Okay, so I'm just gonna simply I mean, this is very, very fast. I'm just gonna take this and grill the bread. And you wanna get it quite charred. So this was really quick. I just turned it off. Um, nicely charred. Looks like it was right out on the barbecue. And now I'm gonna take a whole clove of garlic and just rub it, especially on the edges where it's really crispy and, and it's gonna melt that garlic. Then we'll do the other side. How are our other ones doing? They're ready too. That one can use a little bit more. And then you just get a big leaf of basil. We're filming this on Super Bowl Sunday. This would be a great Super Bowl Sunday snack. There we go. Now, this fantastic Planeta olive oil, Sicilian olive oil. 
generously drizzled on top. My favorite Malden sea salt. Just a little bit of this nice Malden sea salt. Generous black pepper. You don't even need any chili on here because we're using an olive oil that has a bit of spice. And there we go. Okay, so Mara has finished these amazing Roman bruschetta mm -hmm. and absolutely amazing smelling and look tremendous. So I'm gonna try one of these guys out. Um, excited, as she was saying, this is a, a local um, naturally leavened organic bread that we use, which makes it pretty special. From full pea, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So garlicky and yeah. Mm. And just that heavy olive oil, well, not heavy, but the body of the olive oil yeah. with the, the bread. Mm. Just the, the lightness of everything that's put on it. Mm. That's fantastic. That is a wonderful little Good. snack. Yeah. Great so, for the summer. Great. Mm. Would you put tomatoes on there ever? Then it's not Roman bruschetta. You can oh. do it, but just don't call it Roman bruschetta. <laughs> Okay, uh, I like to break all the rules. <laughs> uh, so thanks so much, Mara. This has been fantastic. I, I, I love knowing that much more about olive oil. I, you know, still, I think we're in agreement of the approach to using cast mm -hmm. iron and, and carbon steel. Yeah. Is to use grapeseed oil, thin your oil. Yeah. Don't use a, an organic, or sorry, don't use a uh, first Finishing press, oil. Yeah. Um, as, as your main cooking oil. Yeah. And understanding the reasons why you're going to have some problems. Yeah. If you are getting blackening and carbon buildup and that sort of thing using olive oil, yeah. there's a reason for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's okay. great. And great. Uh, I definitely am going to probably, you know, I have really good olive at home, but, you know, I think some of these Sicilian ones, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go for. So. It's a treat. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Any questions, comments, throw them below. Thank you.